everyone, Carl Larson here with a brand new After Effects CS4 tutorial for you. Today I'll be showing you how to recreate one of the oldest and most popular optical illusions in the history of the known universe. And no, I'm not talking about the lightsaber. It's the Drosta effect. It all started around 1900 with the Drosta brand cocoa tin in Holland. On the tin, there's a picture of a nurse serving hot cocoa. And on her service tray is the same picture, only smaller, of the original cocoa tin. Inside that picture, there's even a smaller picture of her serving the cocoa. And on and on, the cycle repeats forever. Well, at least until it got too small to draw, but you get the point. So fast forward to 2008 with the introduction of Adobe After Effects CS4. Of course, we're given a number of great new features. A slick new interface, cartoon filter, mock -a tracker, GPU acceleration, and the Pixel Bender toolkit. Although you may not have noticed this little known beauty during the installation, this utility from Adobe Labs allows developers to create image transformation filters for several applications, including After Effects. And you guessed it, we can now make the Drosta effect right in After Effects, with minimal effort and for free. If you didn't install it with your copy of CS4, go to the Adobe Labs website and get the download. Install the toolkit and download the Drosta plugin from the Pixel Bender Exchange. While you're surfing around, be sure to stop by Tom Bedard's website, subblue.com, and thank him for making such a killer plugin for the community. He also has a great getting started page there covering some of the more advanced features of the plugin that we won't be able to address as thoroughly in this tutorial. Once you've downloaded the Drosta plugin, drop it in your plugins folder in the After Effects CS4 application folder and fire up After Effects to see what this thing can do. We can use just about any image to get started, but the effect works best using a square composition with a clearly defined object near the middle of the frame. As an example, we'll use this clock from my kitchen wall. I've already gone ahead and animated the hands, just so we have a moving picture. Let's take the Clock AE composition, drop it on a Make New Comp button, and rename it Clock FX. Down in the timeline, select the layer and go Effect Pixel Bender Drosta. The first thing we need to do is tell the plugin what size of image we're feeding it. So 2000 pixels wide by 2000 pixels high. And just using the default settings, we already get something pretty cool. Without going into an advanced lecture on recursive mathematics and the fractals involves, let's quickly go through some of these other settings. Inner and outer radius. Think of these settings as the inner selection and outer selection of the source image. Inner radius is the start value for the inner spiral expressed as a percentage of the radius of the input layer's width dimensions. The default value of 25 tells the plugin to throw away the inner 25% of the image as it makes its coil on screen. Raising this value removes more of the inner portion and makes the spiral tighter. Lowering this value keeps more of the inner portion and makes the spiral thicker. Similarly, the outer radius is the start value of the outer spiral expressed as a percentage of the input layer's width dimensions. The lower this value goes, the less bricks we'll see. Let's put that to 50 for now. Naturally, as these two values become closer to each other, the spiral becomes tighter. Periodicity sets the ratio between revolutions and repetitions within the Drosta effect. Right now, all of the numbers line up with each other because the ratio is one revolution to one copy of the clock. If we start pushing this value up, we now have 1.1 copies of the clock per revolution. So the numbers are no longer 1 and 1, it's 1 and 12. If we put this up to 1.5, we get one and a half copies of the clock per spiral. So now there's a six number difference between all of our numbers. Six, 12, five, 11, 10, four. You get the idea. To demonstrate strands, I'm just gonna reset the outer radius here to 100. And strands is simply the number of copies of swirls we have in our picture. So two strands is equal to two swirls. Strand mirror just flips the copy over. We should probably only use this setting if we have an even number of strands in our image. You get kind of weird results if it's an odd number. It works, but it's not really predictable. Zoom pushes you in and out of your render. Rotate rotates. Center X, center Y push the render around. Center shift X and center shift Y allow you to compensate if your object of interest is not exactly in the middle of the frame. You can just offset your properties and away you go. If we try to offset on this one, since our clock is right in the middle, it'll kind of tear the image apart. So we'll go to zero. Number of levels is the amount of picture-in-picture -picture effects that the plugin will keep track of as it renders. By default, nine is a good value. If you're building a very complex effect, you may need to turn this up. Enable transparency. 
These features allow you to cut away a specific portion of an image with a predefined mask, like the classic photo frame in the photo frame Drasta effect. We're not going to cover that in this lesson, but it's definitely something worth playing around with. Lastly, let's look at the polar coordinates. To demonstrate this as clearly as possible, let me turn on Enable Poles. Polar coordinates X is like a world transform function before the render actually takes place. If you loop this from 180 to minus 180, you can get some very interesting results. Y and Z do the exact same thing. You just need to play with these settings to see what will work for you. All right, well, let's reset this to a default setting and get animated. So 2000 by 2000. And we're going to try to make a swirly clock world kind of, well, it'll look cool. So the first thing we're going to do is let's change our outer radius to 50. Now we just have clocks. I think what I'll probably do is end up animating the periodicity so it looks like it kind of swirls in here. So a good start value for us might be 0.9. We'll animate the center Y, center X, and let's enable poles here too. So we'll turn that on. What I'd like to do is kind of start in one swirl here, zoom into that, pull out, and push over into the other one here. So kind of a three keyframe thing. Let's set some keyframe values here. First thing we'll need to do is move our render over. So center X and we'll zoom in. Set another keyframe here for zoom. Let's zoom up to like three. Readjust here with a little X. That looks good. Let's go to the end of the composition and now we'll move it over with our center X property. Make that a little lower. We'll leave the zoom where it is and then in the middle we'll kind of pull out. So looks like everything else here is good. We want to turn this periodicity up to like 1.4 let's say. And now you can kind of see your animation falling apart. We don't have quite enough copies in there, so I'm going to turn up our number of levels to 20. We don't need to animate that, but we just need to have enough swirls to fill that hole. Lastly, let's go to the middle of the composition and push the zoom back to zero. Selecting the layer, press U on the keyboard to reveal all of the keyframe properties. And I'm just going to grab this middle keyframe here, press the Command key on the Mac, and turn that into a Bezier interpretation. That way I'll get a smoother animation on my zoom. Finally, let's move the Drasta effect into a 720p HD timeline. Project, drop clock effects onto a make new composition button. Go to composition, composition settings, and we'll just change the width to 1280 by 720 high, square pixels. Selecting our clock effects layer, since it's 2000 by 2000, it's too big for our composition size. So zooming out so we can see the bounding box, we'll go layer, transform, fit to width. As a final touch, I usually like to make some interesting color effects. We'll just add two solids real quick. Layer, new, solid. We'll make a red composition size solid, kind of a dark red. OK, make sure it's comp size. Click OK. We'll build a quick vignette on this, so we'll grab the ellipse tool, grab our solid, double click the ellipse tool, subtract, pressing MM on the keyboard to reveal all of the mask properties. So let's turn up the feather to about 250 and change the composite mode to classic color burn, turning the opacity down to about 40%. If we press our M key to reveal our mass properties again, let's bring that in a little bit so we can see a little more of the burn happening on the edges. Now we'll add one more solid layer, new, solid. We'll make it kind of a dark blue this time. Click OK. Grab our rectangular mask tool and draw a large rectangular mask. Press F on the keyboard to reveal the feather properties and feather it to 350. We'll scale up the layer, pressing S on the keyboard to about 100, 165%. Rotate it off to the side and change the composite mode to overlay. Let's press T on the keyboard to back that opacity off to about 80% or so. Finally, let's do a RAM preview of our composition. beautiful. Now if you've been wondering how you might actually use this in a production environment, I'd encourage you to check out Frank Beltran's recent music video called Clap Your Brains Off, done for the band No Somos Machos. What made this project so revolutionary is that it was shot entirely with a still camera, the Canon 1D Mark III, in 115 frame bursts at a time, and all of the Drasta effect image transformations were done using a command line application on a series of image sequences before CS4 was available. As a result, his team literally spent months working on the project, tweaking the equations to get everything just right. 
But now, with the introduction of After Effects CS4 and the Pixel Bender Toolkit, you can make your own Drosta music video, or whatever else you desire to make, in a matter of minutes, not months. Thanks for all of your hard work and inspiration, Frank. You've left a great path for us to follow. Until next time, I'm Carl Larson for creativecow.net.